Howdy friends, thanks for joining us. This is a People Also Ask segment. We just did a, another video answering the question, does an LLC operating agreement need to be filed with the state? So if you haven't seen that, be sure to click wherever I put that link <laughs> to watch that video. But now we're gonna cover some similar questions that yeah. people also ask, hence the name of the segment. Yeah, it's great. So uh, let's throw it out there, Shreya. <laughs> this is all off the cuff, too. So. Yeah, it is. Hopefully I know the answers. Yeah. Fingers crossed. All right, number one. Does an operating agreement need to be notarized? I'm going to weigh in on that, Shreya. Yeah. It does not need to be notarized. At least not in any of the states where we have helped people. Yeah. It's a private document. You mm -hmm. sign it on your own. You might even digitally sign it through DocuSign or something like that. Yes. However, you could notarize it mm -hmm. if you're worried about some disputes in the future with your partners or something some like fakes, that. Some fakes, some fake operating agreements surfacing. Mm -hmm. So you could require for your business that operating agreements for your business be notarized. Yeah. I mean... You're setting the rules, so if you want that to be a requirement, mm -hmm. you can. Yes. Very good, Shreya. Let's move on. Number two, is an LLC required to have an operating agreement? I'm going to say yes. No, Shreya. I mean, well. okay, it's highly recommended. Exactly. It's like not required, but is kind of required, especially right. like we were talking about before. In the last video, we were talking about the banks. Yeah. So it's not required by right. the state, but then if a bank requires you to have it to open a business bank account, then it is kind of required because if you're going to have a business, then you should have a business bank account. Yeah. And if you're going to have a business, you should have an operating agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, no, nobody's told you you have to, but yeah. You gotta kind of have one. Yeah. Pretty it's good. a very useful tool to have. Exactly. Which leads to the next question, number three, how do I get an operating agreement? Call Shreya. <laughs> <laughs> that is one way, is to call an attorney and have them draft an operating agreement for you. There can be other ways. Um, there's a bazillion templates online. Yeah, there are a bazillion templates online. And if you like, say, one size fits all clothing, then mm -hmm. a one size fits all template could be good for you. Yeah. If there's nothing unique or special um, about the way you want to operate your business. Yeah. So it ranges from mm -hmm. generic to highly customized. Yes. That's how you get one. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're gonna have a verbal operating agreement, you sit down with your partner, yeah, with a glass of wine or maybe a beer, <laughs> and you have a chat, yeah, and you agree upon how to operate. Can I launch into a story about our operating agreement? Sure. Sure. So we created an operating agreement when we first started this business and we laid it all out as to who was investing what money and what our roles were proposed to be, how we were gonna settle disputes. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know where this story is going. And then we lost it. So we pretty much have a verbal operating agreement. Right. That's where I was going with it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Well, I don't know where it is. It's buried. Actually, it is most likely in our original business binder. Yeah. We had that binder. That was all a lie. We didn't lose it. We just stored it somewhere safe. Yeah. So let's just finish up here, Shreya. People, sure. are, people are dying to know what's number four. It is, what is the purpose of an <laughs> LLC operating agreement? You need to stop saying that using the WH as what. What, Whistler. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, Shreya, lay it down. What's the purpose? Well, it's your rules of engagement. That is the purpose of an LLC operating agreement is it's the rules of engagement. It's what happens if something goes a, wrong. Are you an army? <laughs> you're fighting someone? Rules of engagement? Sometimes. <laughs> it's how you're going to operate the business. It is... 
what happens if you're not available to um, do things for the business? Who can take over? Who will do what? Yes. <laughs> it can be outlining how disputes are settled, how things might be transferred, if things can be transferred. I like to tell people it's like a playbook. It is. Of how your business works. I mean, that's what I was trying to say with the rules of engagement, but I guess playbook is maybe... Oh, well, we ha each have our own words, Jan. <laughs> we do each have our own words. I like your words. <laughs> I like your words. Do you? Yeah. Cool. Anything else to add? No. Very good then. Thank you, Shreya. Wait, can I, I do have something to add. Mm. It gives you some written documentation of what you agreed to when your faulty memory, because we all have faulty memories, mm -hmm. when your faulty memory fails to yeah. remember what you decided. Yeah, and that can be helpful if you have other partners in your business, mm -hmm. um, especially when you agree on those things when times are good, before things have gone awry. Well, if, that is the best way to do it. Right. Agree when spirits are high. Yes. Not stressed and pushed to the limit. Mm hmm All right. Well, thanks, Shreya. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. Do you have a question that you also ask? Yeah. Leave it down below in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.